Hello and welcome to astronomydrawings.com. People ask me, well, if you've got a very big telescope, or even a monstrous bioscope such as this one, well, what's the use of also having a pair of astronomical binoculars such as these? Because this bioscope collects 20 times more light than these binoculars. And you can use 10 times as much telescope power with this easily and with this little fellow. So what's the use having this? Uh, why not just put it up for sale? Well, I can tell you that I'm never, ever going to put these binoculars up for sale. Because these two instruments, they are not competitors. They are complementary. So, in order to explain the difference between a big telescope and the relatively small binoculars, first I have to explain something about how telescopes actually work. And first let me put myself on top right here. There we go. And we're going to talk about exit pupil. Wow, what is exit pupil? Sounds very complicated. Well, it isn't. Suppose this is the lens or the mirror of our telescope. Now, its purpose is to capture as much light as possible, much more than we can capture with our tiny little eye, and then converge it, concentrate it, as it were, so that it all fits into our eye. Now, the eyepiece lens here at the back of the telescope delivers the light in a sort of a small disk, small image disk, which fits exactly into our pupil, into our eye. And this little disc is what we call the exit pupil. Now, mathematically speaking, the exit pupil is the focal distance of the eyepiece divided by the focal ratio of the telescope. In easier words, suppose that you have um, an F5 telescope and an eyepiece of 35 millimeters then the exit pupil is 35 divided by, oh sorry, yes, 35 divided by uh, 5, which is 7, 7 millimeters exit pupil. And this is actually perfect because our eye can open at most for about 7 millimeters at night. So if the exit pupil of our telescope goes beyond, becomes larger than 7 millimeters, well, some of the light will get lost and we don't see it all. Uh, and that, that really is a pity because um, a telescope needs to deliver as much light as possible. Now, so the biggest eyepiece that we can use uh, for a 7mm exit pupil and with an F5 telescope is 7 by 5 is exactly 35mm. This is the biggest possible eyepiece that we can use with our F5 telescope. Otherwise, some of the light will get lost. Uh, it will not fit all into our eye. Um, and now, if we take a look again at our binoscope, big binoscope, and the relatively small binoculars, um, which both of which are coincidentally F5, so this is, is a very nice coincidence, with a 35mm eyepiece, we get a magnification of 65 times with the binoscope, but only 14 times with the binoculars. So with the binoculars, okay, it doesn't capture as much light, etc., etc., but uh, it has a much smaller minimum magnification, and so it captures a larger part of the sky. Uh, you have a much wider field of view. And what does this mean um, when looking at uh, astronomical objects? Now, look at open cluster M21 in Sagittarius, and this is with the binoscope. So here you see, well, it looks quite loose, doesn't it? It almost gives the impression that we are looking through it, because with our minimum magnification, well, uh, all of the stars get dispersed in this large area. Now, if we look at the same object with um, the binoculars, right here. There it is. So here we've got our open cluster which looks actually very nice and dense and all of these little stars in a very small uh, uh, surface. But hey, what's this? 
in the same field of view, we also get this, M20, wow! Now, if we look at M20 in the binoscope, oh yes, well, this is quite something different. It's, it's big, it's spectacular, you see all of these uh, nebulous filaments, you see all of these dust lanes, these details, it's wow, it's amazing. But with um, the binoculars, okay, it's not as big and spectacular, but we've got all of this in the same field of view. This is amazing, and this is exactly the difference that I'm talking about. Now, let's go and simulate um, that we are looking uh, through the binoculars, um, and so we've got M2021 here, and here is M20. And um, just let, let's move around a bit. Let, let's go down a bit. And, oh wow! Here we've got M8, the Lagoon Nebula, and it's all in the same field of view. Wow! This is this is amazing. And then then just l let's move slightly up here. And here we've got Saturn. And normally, well, we could see the rings, and here we see one or two moons as well. Uh, it was just just move, moving slightly the um, the binoculars, and now we move up a little bit. Uh, let's let's go a bit. And hey, what's this? This is M24, and here we see uh, NGC 6603, and it's all big and it's all nice in one one and the same field of view, which would be impossible with the binoscope, because with the binoscope you only see a detail about, about this, this size. Uh, then we move up again. Here's M18, yes, and then here's M17, and then we move up again a little bit, and here's M16, and it's all nearly in the same field of view. This is really amazing, and this is exactly the difference that I'm talking about. It's not about going into the big detail and all these nebulous filaments and these tiny little stars. No, no, no. We're talking about the big picture, um, about a wide field of view, about relaxing, just taking the binoculars and cruising the Milky Way. That is the difference. So both instruments are compatible. They are certainly not competitors. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you soon on www.astronomydrawings.com Bye.